How's it going, Charles Botenston? Today we're gonna to be talking about something that is gonna be one of my favorite subjects. This is something that I've talked about a lot. And I've actually, first I was gonna title, title it, Should I Dump Them? But then I noticed that this is actually aimed more at women dumping their boyfriend. And I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, the answer is yes, you should. If you're even clicking on this video, that means you're already thinking about it. And if you're already thinking about it, then you just need the reassurance. You need the okay, the validation. And I'm telling you right now, you have it from me. It's gonna be perfectly fine, and here are the reasons why. So number one is you're in a relationship, or even you're married, and you're just unhappy. And it could be for whatever reasons. And I'm not talking about the reasons, like the bad reasons, like he's abusing me, or he's... He's an alcoholic or he's cheating on me. I'm talking about like, like emotional reasons, like feelings and things like that. You know, why women don't feel connected. You know, those kind of feelings. Not like obvious reasons where you're like, well, he's abusing me. What should I do? It's like, well, freaking dump him and leave him. No, I'm talking about the reasons you're like, well, he's a nice guy. He's, he's, you don't understand, Charles. He's a nice guy. I do understand. But do you understand? And I'll tell you why. So this first came to my recolle recollection, if that's even a word, recollection, about five years ago, probably uh, about five, six years ago. And I'm on the internet and I'm trolling around and blah, blah, blah. And I have notes on this. And I stumbled upon this website called Adult Experiment or something like that. It was like adultexperiment.org or whatever. And it's a bunch of parents that get together. It sounds like a really dirty website. It's not, I promise. It's a bunch of parents that get together and they give advice to other parents. So it's like, my kid is into drugs. What do I do? And then other parents who's, who've had similar situations, they help them out. Or I'm having marital issues or I'm having... You know, what should I do for this wedding or my baby's brand new and, you know, they're, te they're not teething or they're not walking or what, I don't know, whatever questions adults have that are married. So there's a section in there for marriages and I was like, oh yeah, no, I'll just check that out. So I clicked on it. I can't tell you, literally post by post by post by post. I don't know if this was started in the South. But it was like every story was exactly the same. It was the same scenario. It was just different names within like two or three years of each other. But this story was the same. The story was, I met this guy in college. My parents told me he was the best one. And when I was in high school, my parents said, I better meet someone in college. And I met them in college. And my parents said he was he's the one to marry. So then I married him at 22 or 23, and now I'm 30 or 31. We have two kids. They're both around six or seven right now, or five or six. And you know they're not like brand like brand new babies. You know they're like they're walking around. They're going to school or whatever. And she's like, I'm miserable. You know, we're not having sex. I am like, I haven't been intimate with him. We don't really cuddle. We don't really hug. We don't really kiss. I'm 30. I'm really horny. And we're pretty much just roommates. And I just remember thinking like, I, at the time I was like 23, 24. I was like, holy cow. I was like, really? This happens? I thought like every marriage was like perfect. You know, in the ignorant self I was at the age. I was, I was 23. I didn't know anyone that was married or whatever. And now I know differently. So I started reading through in the comments where like, honey, I was in the same position. You got to divorce him or whatever. Otherwise, you're going to be married for another 40, 50 years and you're going to be miserable and blah, blah, blah. And, and this is the issue with every single guy. And, and, and the basic thing happens is the guy stops growing. He stops expanding or he loses his passion. He loses why you started dating him or why you thought he was sexy. In other words, you thought he was sexy because he worked on cars and then you got married and then he doesn't work on cars or he, he was a, a really good, I don't know, whatever you're into. Like he had a passion for rock climbing or motorcycling or, or whatever, golfing or sports or he was out with the boys or he worked out a lot. He had this passion that you just felt alive. And now he lost it. He just, he, he lost his ways. He settled. And for me, I'm anti-settling. I'm averse to average. I hate average. And that's the that's the, the the theme throughout all of them is that the woman's like, I'm getting into my own. And this is the biggest thing is that I love it. You know, w women now have so many opportunities, and it's amazing. I love it. But the problem is, men are decreasing in their like 
manliness, you know? They, they've lost their way. As David Data says in The Way of the Superior Man, is that they don't have their, they're not on their path. They lost their path. They, they are not true to who they want to be. They're just, they're supplicating. They're just, they're pandering to their, to their wife or they're pandering to their job or they're pandering to their health and they just lost it. And now that's not sexy to their spouse. And now their spouse is like, crap, he's a nice guy, but I just don't feel any passion or I don't feel like I want to get intimate with him. And I'm horny or I have needs or I have feelings or I want to be, you know, like, you know, like I want a man. And then they lost that. So this is as much as propping up the men. And I'm going to have a video to, to really crush it with the men because they, they, they're losing their way. But the thing is, for women, you, you just got to get out and there's, trust me, there's plenty of men out there. You just got to find them. But you have to be a little feminine when you, you can't be like, hey, dude, what's going on? Like, I, I was on a couple of days. This is just a side note. I was on a couple of days. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? And I'm like, ah, uh, no, that's not going to work here. I'm not dating my best friend. I'm dating a woman, all right? My bros don't, or girls don't say, yo, what's up, bro? What's going on, dude? Hey, brother. I'm like, no, no, not, not here. Not happening. But going back to it. So here's another scenario. Uh, I was working at a Tony Robbins event and I was at the sales table and at the sales table they have all these products that you could buy and one of them was relationships. Time after time these women were coming up and they were like, hey listen, it was the same exact story. So I'll give you two scenarios. One, this woman was, she was from Long Island, she's probably 55, 60 years old. She, I would say 55. She looked good. And she was like, she was healthy, she was energetic, she looked good. And she came up and she's like, hey, um, I've been married for about 30 years and I don't know how to spice it up with my husband. And I'm like, whoa, tell me more. So she goes into it. She goes, well, recently I got into a career in real estate and it's really invigorated me. I now have a passion. I now have something to work for and look forward to. And he's retired and he just doesn't work out. He doesn't go to the gym. He doesn't eat healthy. He just sits on the couch. He drinks or he, he doesn't even go out with his boys and... It's really bringing me down. I need something. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's crazy. But, you know, I, we talked a little bit more. Here's another one. Girl, a lot younger. She was 31. She was engaged, ready to get married in six months. I actually ended up friending her on Facebook and we're friends on Facebook. And she ended up marrying this guy. And she was like, I don't know if I should do it. I'm like, no, you should not. You shouldn't. If you're thinking about maybe I shouldn't marry this guy, if you're even thinking of that. It's the same thing. I own a business. The, the, the one second I start thinking, should I fire this person? That's when you should do it. Should I dump this person? That's when you should do it. Because you're already thinking about it. Like, yeah, put some time into it. But to be honest, time just is time. And I'll give you my example, my scenario. I know this is eight minutes, but I hope this helps a little bit. So uh, the same thing with her. I'm like, no, you, you should not. And she told me exactly why. She met the guy in college. They, they're off and on for about five or six years and then they started dating because she got older and the pressure was on her to have kids, the normal BS scenario that society puts on women and men. Men, you should be doing this. Men, you should be doing that. Women, by 30, you need to have at least one kid. By 32, you should have two kids. So then women feel like they need to settle and they need to date this person. It's complete garbage, Okay. Um, and I can tell you, my mom had me at 41, maybe by accident, but <laughs> so she was going into it and she's like, yeah, we off and on, but the last three years, you know, I was 28, 29, all my friends were married and I just felt all this pressure. So I was like, yes, they got engaged. And now she's like, I don't know if I should do it. I'm like, no, you shouldn't. And then she gets married. I don't know what has happened. It's funny. I, maybe I should look it up, but I don't even want to because you're settling. And, and I'll tell you my, my story is was dating this girl and uh, halfway through it, I was growing, I wanted to expand, I wanted to do more and that's the basic theme is that the woman wants to do all these big things, all these things because it's like society's now finally like, yes, women, power, awesome, do it. You're like, and the ability and the time and obligations and the payment and the health and everything else is all on your sides. And then the guy, he loses his way. As I said before, David Data, you lose your way and then you just go off track and then the guy's like, uh, he just walks around like a, like a fleebly little like, 
you know, like leaf in the wind and he's not this strong masculine guy, the man that you went on date number one with and you're like, wow, this might be the one date number two you went out and you're like, this is, this is a great man and he turns into a boy because the boy doesn't need to try as hard to, because he's like, I'm engaged or I'm married, you know, I don't need to try as hard. So this was my thing is that um, I was in a relationship, great girl, unbelievable girl, we had very special very sparking chemistry, if you want to say. Uh, we really were into each other uh, that way. She had a great job, very smart. She was a doctor, making tons of money, way more than I was at the time. She's older, uh, two years older, three years older. But she knew that, give it two years, and where she was, I would be making more. Um, and then I remember thinking, like, I forgot what it was. Oh, I, I started screwing up in the relationship. And I put it in quotes, but no, I was screwing up. Like, I would, I would flake or not, and we were together, and I would flake, and I wasn't a good boyfriend at all. I admit it, I wasn't, but the thing was, she wasn't putting me in my place, so I didn't really, like, respect that. I was like, well, she should be calling me out on this, like, you're not really calling me out on this, so I would say about, you know, a couple, you know, like, a couple of months I was thinking about, it, I was like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm losing the spark. And then I was like, I think we should break up because I remember just over time, you start going like this, your fears, you start conquering fears and expanding your business or whatever. And she's at her job. Sorry, something was on the screen. She's at her job and then she starts declining a little bit, you know, health wise, you know, not going to the gym as much, things like that. And I was like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I have a rising stock right now. And then I remember thinking, I, I think I should dump her. And then I didn't. And then I stayed with her for two years. Two years. Two years. So just remember this. Anyone that's in a relationship, anyone that's in a marriage, imagine yourself two years ago thinking, and maybe this is true, thinking, I should break up with them. And now it's two years later. Okay? So it took me two years to do it. And I can tell you right now, it was, it was the best thing that happened to me because now I'm never going to be in that scenario again. And that's the thing is, the reason I didn't break up with her, number one, it was comfortable. It was comfortable. It was like, I knew who I was going to go home with. I knew who I was going to be with on the weekend. I knew, you know, I didn't need to talk to girls and go out on dates and weddings and whatever, you know, going to the weddings. I knew who my date was. Number two was that, um, what was number two? <laughs> There's two, two reasons. I don't know. I forgot what number two was, but it was good. It was more comfortable and, um, you know, it just, it just, it was easy. That's really what it was. It, it was just really easy to be in the relationship. So I ended up finally breaking up and I can tell you right now, oh, I wish I remembered the second reason, but, oh, there might be families involved. Oh, and here it was. She was a good girl. She was a good girl. It wasn't like she was doing anything wrong to me. Actually, it was the opposite. She was like, no, yeah, no, that's cool. You can do whatever you want. Da, da, da. She was a good girl. And that's what you're thinking in your mind. You're like, it's comfortable or, it, or he's a good guy. I don't, to, I don't want to hurt his feelings. He's a good guy. He's not doing anything wrong. But the thing was, she is good. She's great. She's perfect for someone else. She actually recently got engaged. You know, good for her. She's just not right for me. She's perfect for someone else. She's just not perfect for me. And it's the same thing with you. That guy you're dating is perfect for someone else. She's, he's not perfect for you. You wouldn't be on this video still listening to me if, 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 if that was the scenario. So I implore you. And since we broke up, like, I, like literally this was me while we were dating. Like I was going like this. We broke up and I was like, like that. Business, started my own business. Working out a lot. Now, uh, biking regularly, playing hockey regularly, income, happiness, wealth, ha like everything has dramatically increased because now I'm focused on myself. And this is the best way to think about it. Two things I'll leave you with. Number one is you do you. You do you. You, you like, if it's not the one, you have to, you, you do, like, you need to focus on yourself. Like, I cannot put it more clearly is that and I'm gonna make another video about this, is that people shouldn't be telling you, society shouldn't be telling you, oh, you're 29, you don't have a boyfriend? You need to get a boyfriend immediately. You need to have a kid. And I know way too many girls, way too many girls. Perfect scenario, perfect example. Uh, ran into this girl, went to high school with her. Beautiful girl. 
And actually, I can tell you three stories, three of the exact same scenarios. I dated two of them, but it was like really, we were really young. Like one was in like seventh or eighth grade. And the funny thing is, you don't really like lose that chemistry because you're really young and whatever. But I saw them, I was like, oh my God. One of them was Rachel, the other one was Lexus. I was like, oh, you know, or hugging everything else. And then like this guy came up and I was like, oh, congratulations. I saw their, uh, and this is all at three different times. This isn't at the same time, but there were, the, all three girls were married. We went to high school. I haven't seen them in 10, 12 years. So it was really great to see them. And then, you know, oh, how is it? Oh, you still live in the city. You're married. Congratulations. Any kids? Oh, we're going back and forth. And then out of nowhere, this guy comes around and wraps his arm around her. And he's like, hey, man, what's going on? I'm big nuthead noodle face. I was like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? He's like, this is my wife. I'm like, okay, cool, bro. Cool. Awesome. You're the man. Make sure you know that you are the man. But that's the thing is that the guy is insecure because she is still beautiful. This The, the men were like out of shape. They look like a mess. And it was like... You feel bad for her because she's she has a rising stock. She can get a lot of things or a lot of things. Yeah, she can get a lot of things like great jobs and blah, 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 but also great guys. And that's the biggest thing is that I, I cannot tell you how much like I saw in her eyes. Like I haven't seen them in 10, 12 years, but I saw in her eyes. She looked at me and she's like, fuck. She's like, maybe I should have waited. <laughs> Not like uh, for me, but she was like, oh, maybe there were other guys out. My parents blistering me to get married. Maybe they were wrong. So don't listen to your parents. Yes, the guy that you're dating, he's a nice guy and he's great. And maybe the families are involved or maybe there's other things like a business or an apartment or a dog or whatever. But you need to do you. And secondly, when you do it, it's a big decision. I understand. And, and I literally made three big decisions. I went to a Tony Robbins event, highly recommend. You know, you've already know that, you know, I'm into his stuff, his uh, material, his content and things like that. And it's on, it's on like, whoa, right now. But went to one of the events and this is what pushed me over the edge. This is what pushed me over the edge to finally make the big decision. So uh, the event ends on Sunday. I come back into the city, New York City where I live. And I literally drive to her apartment and I'm like, listen, Blah, 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 you know, um, I'm not going to mention her name, but, you know, we're, you know, it's been a couple of years, everything else. She starts crying. I'm like, listen, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. But it felt good. Not that it, she was crying or anything like that. We obviously consoled and everything, and she's in cage. She's doing fine. But at the time, it just, it was something I was thinking about. And it was like finally just saying, it's best for both of us. I'm not giving 100% and I don't want to hurt you more later on. And then literally, I, we, I broke up with her. Then I went home. I woke up my roommate. I said, I'm moving out. And then the following morning, I quit my job. And to be honest, those are three pretty big things. Relationship, job, and your housing. And literally, that Monday, I felt alive. I felt alive. It was the biggest decisions I've ever made. I felt amazing. Amazing. I, I, can't, I can't even tell you. You need to do you. And as Dr. Susan Jeffers says in the book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, unbelievable book. It was the first book that I read uh, at age 22 from cover to cover. That was my first book. And then since then, you know, I've read, actually I read on a Kindle now, but um, she wrote in the book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And it's a big decision, I understand. But she wrote in there, it was an unbelievable sentence. Whatever happens, whatever big decisions you need to make, Know that you'll be able to handle it. And just say that to yourself, I'll handle it. All the backlash and all the texting and the heartbreak and the, the difficultness. And, and listen, I live in New York City, so when we broke up, it's like we have so much else going on. You could be in the middle of nowhere. You could be in a small town. You could be in a small city. I don't know. I don't know your situation. You could, like I said, have families involved. But just know that you'll be able to handle it. So I hope this helps. If you have any comments, any questions, let me know. And I, I probably from all the comments or all the messages I'll get, I'll do a follow-up video, but this is pushing 20 minutes. And I can tell you right now, I, I hope that you go out and, and you just make the best decision and I, just have a boundary. There's a book over here right on this pile called Boundaries. Actually, it might be that one right there. It's called Boundaries. You need to have boundaries. You need to know I want more and he doesn't want as much as I do. I want to make tons of money. I want to be having great sex and look great and have great relationships, have it all. Don't have an or mindset. An or mindset 
Like, I want a job or a great relationship. No, have both. I want to have a great relationship and a great job. It's like, I want to have a passionate relationship and look great and have a great job and be happy. Have an abundance mindset. Don't have this or mindset. Have this limiting BS. Like, that's settling. Don't settle. We only get one time at this called life. I know this is over 20 minutes and I know this is way longer than my other videos. Um, but this is literally from the passion because I have such a, uh, I, I just look, first of all, like I love women, like in general, like dating or not dating. It's like, they're beautiful creatures. Like they're beautiful. And like guys are amazing. I love, I like guys, but the thing is like, there shouldn't be any settling on either end. It's like, there's a guy or there's, you know, you know. Guy and guy for anyone, girl, girl. But I mean, in a heterosexual relationship, there's a guy and a girl for everyone. There's a person for everyone. There is. There's a person for everyone. I truly believe that. You just cannot settle and be like unhappy. Because if you're unhappy, they're unhappy. If they're unhappy, then their friends are unhappy. Like literally it goes layers down the social circle. There's books about it. Amazing book about it actually reaches five people. So the person you're dating is actually a reflection of the, their closest friends and their closest friends friends, which is insane to think about. So subscribe to the video, follow me on Snapchat, which I'm absolutely crushing. I actually have a podcast now that it's more of a rant. I put on a headset and I literally, I don't have the headset around here, but I literally uh, just go on a rant and I don't have to talk to a video and everything else. And it's just, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wow. And I'm just in the zone. So subscribe to the videos as well. Leave any questions. I'm definitely going to have a follow-up video because I'm going to get a lot of messages on this. And, uh, you know, that's my thing. And I know there's going to be guys that are like, what do you mean, Charles? Be on your side or whatever. No, dude, you need to step your game up. All right. You don't need to like, like strong women and whatever. Like that's, you're not strong enough, bro. It's not them. And I'll make a video right after this spanking around the guys because they need it. All right. Subscribe to the videos, podcast, Instagram, Snapchat, it's all linked below. And also I put out a, a dolly, a dolly, <laughs> a daily blog. Awesome. Have an awesome day. Break up with your boyfriend. Talk to you soon.